Good morning guys, good morning internet. This is EJ back once again with another commented art time lapse video. Uh, this time we'll be talking about my submission for the Atom Hawk Solar Punk competition that happened in July 2019. Um, it just happened recently and this is my entry for it. Um, now I want to talk about my feelings about this piece about the composition I turned in. I want to talk about how my idea came about and uh, I want to assess the overall image. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk about that. But before I talk about that, I figured that it's very important for me to just go ahead and just talk about what is going on in the screen. Because what is going on in the screen is me doing a 3D mock-up in Blender. And since this part of the video is going to go by real quick, like, uh, if I'm not wrong, this is just going to go for about 10 minutes or so. Um, so obviously I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time or the video is just going to go by real quick over the 3d part that I figured instead of talking about the piece and how my entry came about, I I'd rather just talk about what's going on in the video. Since this part is going to go by real quick. So, now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about what's going on in Blender. In Blender, what I have is this little monument that I'm creating. Which is, uh, basically it looks like the Triumphal Arch of the Stars in Paris, France. I think that's what the monument is called. Arc de Triomphe. Um, is what the official Wikipedia entry name is and I do believe that yeah this is what this is called the Arc de Triomphe. Um, so my inspiration for this monument is basically that monument in Paris France which is what I'm trying to recreate right now in Blender but I'm putting my own spin to it and my own spin to it is that it has Japanese motifs not only does it have the French motif the Baroque Rococo design of the uh, of the monument, uh, but it also has the Japanese influence in it. So yeah, now in order for me to recreate or to create this monument, what I basically did was I just basically ended up taking just simple shapes. I know that I wasn't going to go into full details in Blender. I wasn't going to go super mo super crazy with modeling. Because I knew that I was pressed for time. So what I did essentially was just simple blocks, simple shapes. Um, you can see that this monument is composed mainly of boxes. And I stacked them all up together. And some of the boxes I edited to edited, edited the boxes so that it would look like uh, roofs. Uh, and I have one cylinder which stands for the clock so yeah so it's done really simple it's done, it's done real fast it's done real quick and the reason why i did this is because 3d mockups and 3d bases helps me troubleshoot perspective issues and lighting issues um instead of me having to just like sketch scenes out sketch the thing out and do the perspective grid and you know best with that um, the good thing about, you know, 3D mockups like this is that it already does everything for you perspective wise and, and lighting wise, you know, you set up the lighting and you set up your buildings and you set up your camera and everything's just pretty much set. So you can see that as soon as I finish my render, all I really have to do is just pretty much just draw over my render. Um, so yeah, that's what you will see me do after this particular uh, part of the video. So yeah, now you can see that I just finished the monument. Uh, I'm pretty much done with it. And so what I'm working on right now is a mock-up of a human. Again, I'm not gonna go into full detail. I just need kind of like a general shape, a general idea. Um, so there's my person. I did it real quick and I scaled down the person um, and later on, I'm going to talk about the scale factor of this whole scene and how I think I messed up with the overall scale of the scene. Um, but I'll talk about that later. 
But you can see that the person that modeled, I modeled it uh, standing up, essentially. Um, I already knew that I was going to have like a lady on a bike kind of deal. And uh, I knew what the overall stance of that person was in the foreground. So basically, I just, you know, try to recreate it as fast as I can um, using simple, simple basic shapes. So yeah, uh, I have this person standing up. I added another box that I turned into a rectangular form of some sort to kind of stand in for the bike. I changed some material colors so that, you know, once it's rendered, I it's not all just gray. I could tell the objects part because there's some colors to it. Now I'm adding the plane. Um, for this plane, I was trying to do the wireframe modifier for the for the floor so that I can have like a perspective grid of some sort. But it wasn't showing through in the camera. Again, I was having like some sort of like camera angle issues here. Um, you can see the perspective wireframe or the wireframe grid. Um, I really needed uh, the lines to show through in the camera. But since it wasn't showing, I decided to just discard it. Um, I think I could have solved the problem by dividing the plane some more. Uh, and then the wireframe would be much smaller. But at this point in time, I think I just decided to just wing it um, and just keep going. Um, so the next few steps I'm going to do is just pretty much lighting. Um, this whole modeling part probably took me like, I'd want to say 30 to 40 minutes, maybe even less. Uh, it went by real quick. The lighting setup was pretty simple. I knew that it was going to be a sunny scene. I didn't need to complicate it with like an indoor lighting scheme or, you know, whatnot. I, I knew that it was just going to be a straight up outdoor scene. And so I just set up a sun, essentially, just one light. But I also needed some shadows in there because I knew that the foreground character was going to be in shadow. And I already have that in mind. And so this is what this plane is. This plane is basically right in front of the light. Uh, you can see me stretch out this plane and you'll see me cut it up so that some light will go show through, which is, which is what happened just now. You see that light just passed through. Um, so yeah, the rest of the scene is just pretty much just me messing around, getting the lighting I look. And then I realized that I really wasn't getting the lighting I looked. So at some point I decided, you know what, I'll fake everything else in Krita in my 2D painting application. So yeah. But the other thing that I added was a building. And you'll see me eventually add this building later on. And the reason why I added the building was because I didn't want the background to be so empty. So I added a building, put it behind the monument. And with that building, I also added the wireframe modifier so that I can have some perspe perspective grids on that building, which will help me in my drawing later on. So, uh, yeah, that's what you will see in the next few minutes.
Okay, so the 3D render is finished in Blender and now I'm about to begin um, doing a sketch outline, a quick sketch outline of my scene. So I'm setting a few things up, um, adding a layer to obfuscate the rendered background at the bottom. And I took a layer and I'm going to use that layer as my sketch layer, which is what I'm doing right now. Now, obviously, my reference, uh, my mo the not my reference, but my inspiration, my inspiration for this uh, particular monument that I'm working on is like I mentioned, Art de Triumph. And Art de Triumph, if I'm not wrong, was created around the Baroque Rococo period. I could be wrong on that. It could have been created much, much later. But the design is very much Rococo, very much Baroque. Um, or it has some um, elements to it. Um, actually, I just looked it up on Wikipedia, and it said the construction started in August 15 of 1806. So it's actually way after those two art periods. It's way after the Rococo Baroque period. Um, and in all honesty, now that I'm like looking at it some more, I, I realize it has more Greek influences to it than those two uh, art periods that I mentioned. So I take it back. Arc de Triumph in Paris, France is not so much as Baroque Rococo. It's more Greek in design, very neoclassical, essentially. Um, but going back to what I'm working on, um, my inspiration always has the Rococo Baroque design in my mind and so essentially this is kind of like what I'm sketching out um so yeah um in all honesty now that I'm like looking at it I feel like the the sketch could be refined some more but since I was pressed for time um which I will talk s much more later in that about the time factors with this piece um but now that I'm looking at it um I realize that some of my designs that I'm putting on there is just way too out of scale it's way too large um in order for this to be much more beautiful uh, I, I feel like it could have been a little bit more the flourishes could have been a lot more smaller and could have a lot been more intricate than this one but i just wanted to get the idea across and so i essentially just made it as simple as i can be and i guess i can't get any more simple than what i've drawn essentially but yeah my two influences for this monument is art de triumph the actual shape of it not so much as the design now that we've gone over the we've gone over the full design influence of that building um and japanese temple gates that's another one of my influence which you can see has that you know japanese temple roof look to it um uh, and i do believe that the japanese temple gates are called tori uh, i hope i'm pronouncing that right but yeah um so those are my two influences and you know when i had this monument in my mind i already kind of wanted to have those two artistic architecture design motifs i already had those two design motifs in my head and i wanted to combine them both essentially in this particular scene so yeah uh i'm gonna sketch the rest of the scene out um after i'm done with this monument i'm gonna start sketching out the person on the bike and that one for me i felt like was fairly easy to sketch out because I i've done some sci-fi drawings or i've done a lot of sci-fi drawings actually so coming up with some you know design for the foreground character wasn't really all that complicated for me uh compared to the monument anyways because you know i kind of had to hammer out like the design motif of it so yeah but this sketch is almost done and so yeah now i can take a few minutes of my time to talk about some things that <laughs> i really wanted to go over beforehand but i know that i couldn't talk 
beforehand because I was going to do the 3D or because the 3D part and the sketch part was just going to go by real quick. So yeah, I just wanted those two parts to be almost complete or to be, you know, for the parts of the video to be shown before I talk about this part that I'm going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But the part I wanted to talk about was how I came about with this piece and where my ideas came from and how I feel about this piece. Um, so real quick, this piece is for the Atom Hawk Solar Punk competition that started on July 7 of 2019 and ended on August 7, 2019. So it just recently ended last week by the time of this recording. <laughs> um, so it ended last week and I found out about the competition maybe third week of July or close to the end of July. So from what I remember, I literally have about two and a half weeks to turn something in. Um, the problem was that I was good. The problem was that I was going to go. Um, I was going to go away for a week. Um, which was fine for me because then at that time when I first ran into this contest and I started thinking about entering into this contest, I was like, yeah, sure. I have two and a half weeks left before the end of it. I'm going to be gone for a week. But when I come back, that really leaves me a week and a half for the contest, which I feel like was enough for me to create like a completely polished, well-rendered piece, you know? So I thought I could still make it, <laughs> but when I came back from where I was, um, I had to catch up on some stuff and I seriously thought that catching up on those stuff will only cost me like a day or two. It turns out I was wrong. <laughs> I was catching up on stuff for a full week. And so literally I did not begin this piece until August 5th, 2019 two days before the deadline of August 7, 2019. And at that point, I really should have just given up and should have just been like, well, I'm just going to let this contest slide by because there's other contests that I could join. It's no big deal if I don't really enter a piece, you know? And so I was getting to that point, especially when I was like doing all the other stuff that I was doing the week before. I was like, well, I'm running out of time for the contest, so... I was starting to lean towards not entering the contest. But yeah, something happened August 5th that kind of just made me change my mind. You know, August 5th rolled around. I was going to do something else. But then I got inspired by a dream. Well, no, it wasn't a dream. It was actually an image. But um, what happened was when I woke up on August 5th, I saw an image on artstation.com called The Upper World by Pablo Carpio. And that image had a monument looking structure to it, you know. And when I saw that image, it made me think of Triumph the Arch or Arc de Triumph in Paris, France. And then when I thought of that, it also made me think of this other prompt from another facebook group that i was on the creative facebook group and then everything just coalesced into my head um so yeah um oh real quick before i talk about what happened on august 5th the morning um just as a preface i i want to talk about what the contest was the contest was to come up with a solar punk team and you know when i looked it up i really didn't have an image in my head i really couldn't think of what should i portray for solar punk because i'm not very familiar with the genre like i really just don't know what solar punk is so i was just like scratching my head forever trying to come up with with something and i remember looking at a few images i, I think i might have looked at um no, I, okay, I take it back. I didn't look at Craig Mullins. I was going to say I look at some of Craig Mullins stuff, but I'm pretty sure I didn't look him up. I, I was thinking of some images that might have been Craig Mullins stuff, but I'm not sure if it was Craig Mullins stuff. But in, in one of the images that I was thinking of, it was pretty much set like the same scene as I have in my art, which is basically 
this monument was the centerpiece of the illustration and there's like a bunch of people around this monument which look very similar to the upper world Pablo Carpio Car Pablo, Car Pablo Carpio's il illustration so um Okay, let me backtrack for a sec because I'm beginning to confuse myself and I have a feeling that I'm confusing you guys with my story. So to backtrack real quick, after I came back from where I was gone, I have a week and a half left. I did some stuff that took me a week. Then I was left with two days to do the artwork. Before those two days, I was already kind of brainstorming ideas in my head. Nothing specific, nothing concrete, nothing written down, nothing drawn. Some of the images that were being thrown in my head uh, was this image that I remember seeing in either artstation.com or cgchannel.com. And it's basically an image of a, a futuristic monument. I believe it's by Craig Mullins. I could be wrong. Um, but then I saw... The image, The Upper World by Pablo Carpio, which looked very similar to that image of the futuristic monument. And that was then that I realized that I have my image for Atom Hog Solar Pump. So that is the story. <laughs> and now that I have the image in my head and I kind of had an idea of what to do, you know, this was two days before the deadline, you know, so there was a slight hesitation on whether or not I should continue to do it, you know, because I didn't want to stress myself in two days. Um, what really pushed me into doing it was the fact that I already have it scheduled to do a speed paint for another Facebook group that I was in, the Creative Facebook group. And the Creative Facebook group has weekly prompts. And I already plan on doing something for the weekly prompt for that week. And the weekly prompt for the Facebook creator group uh, was the wall clock. And that was, uh, that was a prompt that Sonia Bennett came up, which is a great artist. Look her up on artstation.com too. But yeah, so since I already plan on doing a speed paint for the Facebook creator group, anyways, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to combine the Facebook group or the creative Facebook group speed paint with my entry for the solar pump, which is how I came up with this image essentially. Um, so yeah, long convoluted story of how it came with my idea for <laughs> this image. Wow. Yeah. But now that that story is done and now that we're finished with this story, I could talk about how I feel about the image and how I feel about the image is that I really like the composition, in all honesty. I very, very much love the composition. I like the inspiration of the monument, the Arc de Triomphe monument that I came up with. Um, again, thanks to Pablo Carpio's image, The Upper World. Uh, and that image I have that I still could not remember who it was by and what the image was like I can't remember what it is like I could kind of see it in my head but I don't know if I have it saved or not under my favorites um but either way those two images really helped me solidify this idea down which I'm really grateful for um but yeah when I decided to just go ahead and speed paint this whole thing um I'm really happy with the way the lighting came came out and the way the composition came out. Um, so overall, I feel confident with the piece. I, you know, I feel like it has a well-balanced lighting and shadow, and it also has an interesting narrative to the pic uh, to the picture, especially since I added a foreground character. Now. If you ask me if I think this piece has a winning chance or has a chance to win the Atom Hawk competition, I could tell you right now it has a very, very small chance of winning the competition. And the reason why I feel like it has a very small chance of winning is because for me, I believe 
that The reason why I, I don't think that this is going to be the winning piece is because it's not as developed. Um, if there's a contest that is a month long, I would expect that the entries would have about a month's worth of work put in it. You know, um, mine's a speed paint, you know, even though mine's detailed and I feel it was executed nicely. It was executed, uh, very nicely and executed very well and it does have a great amount of details um this won't nowhere won't look nowhere near as good as if i had kept layering on it and kept adding onto it and kept you know expounding on what was already painted essentially so i guess what i'm trying to get at is that i could have developed this piece further more if i had the time and if this piece was super hyper developed then yeah i feel like i might have a winning chance uh on the competition but given that that this was a speed paint i'm almost quite positive that i won't win the competition um i actually did a search on um the hashtag that of i, I just did a search of atom hawk entries atom hawk solar punk entries and I can tell you right now, that there's some really good uh, entries out there. I, I saw an entry by Ismael in Sea of Glue, another favorite artist of mine, and his entry looked good. Um, and I saw an entry by Leon Tucker and Lu Yu Liang John. Um, those were some really good entries. So if you guys want to check those entries out, you're more than welcome to uh, do a search for hashtag Atom Hawk Solar Punk and you'll see images uh that was turned in for the contest but yeah now that i have my assessment down of the image which I, I felt was very important for me to to discuss um because the reason why i felt you know that this part or my feelings about this piece was very important to talk about was because i was going to segue into talking about speed paint versus polish illustration again which i have mentioned this on numerous occasions in some of my videos but um i just wanted to highlight you know what the differences are and you know why it's important to practice both you know for me i mentioned this before i am personally in the camp of more illustration you know, if I could get as much time as I can for every single piece of artwork that I do, I will take all the time that I can get. You know, because developing that piece for me is what I like. I, I like developing pieces. And so if I had developed this piece some more, rather than the five hours that I have devoted to it, you know, um, I feel that what I would have eventually ended up coming up with would we be way better than the five hour work that I just did. But then there's also the counter argument to that, which is, you know, time is of the essence, essence essentially. Uh, and that's the reason why I highlighted the whole story, what happened, how I came about, the inspiration for the piece, yada, da, 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 all that stuff. The reason why I talked about that was because I wanted to highlight the fact that I had two days to come up with an entry, which is a very short amount of time. And the reason why I wanted to mention that was because this happens a lot in the commercial industry. You know, this happens all the time. You know, you have you know this client it was working with another artist you know and they had a, a schedule set but somehow this artist had to drop and this artist did not drop until two or three days you know before the deadline and this client happened to have you as their backup artist you know and so they call or they call you up and say hey can you do this in two three days you know and you're like yeah sure um Essentially, when if something like that happens, you need to be prepared to do a quick turnaround, you know, because the thing with art is that you can always, I mean, if you're like me, you know, taking your time with art is so much better than being rushed, uh, obviously. But yeah, um, the reason why I 
wanted to highlight it, uh, the importance of practicing speed paints is because of situations like that was I was presented with. You know, I was lacking in time. Can I turn this around quickly? Can I turn something in in two days? And obviously, I was able to turn something in in two days. You know. Um, it was about five hours total painting with a one hour in blender spread out in two days um, for some people they would say oh it only took you six hours so technically you could have squeezed that in in one day uh, it never ever works like that you know even though that it only took me five hours to paint this piece in you know, you, you have to realize that I do a lot of pauses, looking up references, doing research, you know, communicating with people. Like part of my process is getting feedback on this. Um, and I got some feedback on some SketchZone.net members um, on this piece and wh what I should do with this piece, you know. So, yeah, it only took me five hours of painting but really it was more like 15 hours of work if you factor in all the research all the thinking that i had to do and brainstorming and and waiting for feedback and whatnot you know so yeah that was like a very hectic two days trying to turn this in technically it felt like three days like i because i think august 7 if i'm not wrong was a wednesday and I technically started work on this on a Monday. So technically it was like three days or something that I had to work with on this one. But I finished everything on Tuesday because I know that I did not want to mess around with this on Wednesday. You know, the day of the deadline. I was just like, no way, sir, am I going to mess around with this? So I rushed this as fast as I can. But yeah, um, that's why I went through that long convoluted story to illustrate <laughs> to you guys the importance of practicing both you know i feel like it's very important for artists to practice you know the long illustration that i do the ones that takes 30 40 hours long you know layers and layers of details and going back and forth and balancing and rebalancing every single component of the image um render 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 <laughs> a lot of rendering um i feel like every artist should practice that you know and I also feel like artists should practice speed paint, which is in the opposite end of the spectrum. You know, and the reason why you should practice speed paint is for situations like the one that just happened to me. So, yeah. But with all that aside, and now that I've mentioned all of that, I guess we can go back uh, to the artwork that we're looking at right now and to the process that has been that has transpired for the past, uh, I want to say, 15 minutes. Um, so yeah, after the sketch, basically what I did was, um, again, I took my one of my favorite brushes, the random mech brush with hue uh, variation. And what I did was I simply layer in a few colors underneath the sketch real quick. Um, I also before i did that i also have one layer that just has two colors in it if you guys recall me doing um this layer with pink and blue pink being the light area and blue being the shadow um i use that i always use that as my base essentially um in a lot of my speed paints you will see me have one background layer it just has two colors in it that stands for the light and the shadow and typically i use contrasting colors you know like a warm color to the cool color i have not yet experimented with cool and cool and warm and warm i've always done either warm or cool actually i've only just done warm on cool i've never even done cool light on warm on warm shadows um so maybe that's something i need to experiment with but yeah so i created that layer that's always my background layer then I add another layer with the random mech brush to, where I just throw like a bunch of colors. And then the other layer that I put in, it's just a random photo. And the photo, I don't really use it for texture. I kind of use it more for color variation. Um, a great example. Um, hang on. Um, 
okay so to collect my thoughts um what that third layer is that photo layer what it actually acts as is more of like a color variation for me and to further explain that if you take a look at the clock right now at the face of the clock you will see there's a bunch of different colors in there and there's some yellows there's some browns there's some reddish tones to it now if i had just simply colored this it would have just ended up as just one color but how I ended up with the variations of colors and hues on that clock was because I added that photo in. Um, that photo, that the colors of that photo acts with the colors that I put in with the layer of the random mech brush. So those two layers kind of interact with each other with color wise. And of course there's also color uh and my back on the background layer and so all those three layers essentially kind of interacts with each other with all the colors that's contained in them uh and then when i blend them in they just kind of has this soup of colors that i work with you know so yeah um basically once i did the background of two shades the color layer of the random mech brush and the photo layer what i ended up doing is i ended up merging all of those together with the sketched outline and then i went and blended them all in with the blender texture brush you know just to come up with this base paint that i am now painting on so yeah um that's basically what happened for like the past 15 minutes and Right now, what we're looking at is just me uh, just basically refining that base paint that I came up with. Uh, so yeah, I'm in the detailing process. And again, the detailing process for me is I delineate the edges, I define it some more, and I add highlights and I accentuate the shadows, which is pretty much just what I'm doing right now. And I forgot to mention that um, in my illustration, you see me do a bunch of green strokes on the monuments roofs as well as uh, green green strokes on the girl. Um, and I have it set to where it basically it looks like it's a uh, glowing neon light. Um, and so the reason why i have the glowing neon lights is basically to kind of tie it into the motif of the solar pump you know um basically the definition of solar pump is that it has something to do with like solar technology you know technology that's powered by the sun and so i figured having solar cells uh, on the roof of that monument kind of reflects the idea that 
a lot of things in this society is basically powered by the sun. So that's where the idea of the glowing neon green um, brush strokes are. So now that, I have, that I'm finished detailing the background, um, I, I finished detailing the building and I finished detailing the girl. Um, and again, like I said, these are just quick, quick details that I'm putting in. I, I could go on some more um, with detailing this piece, you know, like I could go very much more into it. Um, but again, since I was pressed for time, you know, I wanted to do a quick detailing session rather than a full detail session but now i'm about to start with the centerpiece of the illustration which is the monument which is the arch um the monument in our scene the wall clock the solar punk clock <laughs> that is in front of us um and again like i mentioned my inspiration for for the monument is uh, baroque rococo design and japanese temple design and if you look at Japanese temple designs, they have a lot of very complicated uh, wood panel uh, design motif to it. So I, I had issues with how I was going to display that in my illustration. You see all the parts that are red on the monument, like the part I'm working on right now, which is like semi-red, semi-orange, that, that area. I personally feel like those design could have been explored some more, could have been refined some more. And if I had time, I would zoom in on these and like really fine tune the look of it, you know. But again, like I mentioned, since I'm doing this real quick, I'm just really just glossing over it. And then another thing that I, I would do differently if I have more time is the Baroque Rococo design. The flourishes in the monument are too huge personally i mean if this was an actual monument that's real and that's alive those baroque flourishes are just way too huge you can make it look way better if you have you know simple big huge structures together with smaller finer structures so in this case maybe i'll keep some of the uh circles i guess is a word to uh, the spirals. Maybe I'll keep some of the spiral shapes like huge and big, but for the leaf-like uh, drawing that I did right now, I, I feel like those are too big. You know, like I can make the leaves smaller and I could probably add some more flowers to it, you know, so that if this is in real life, you know, if you see this monument in real life, what you would see from afar would just be the spirals, you know, from afar. But then when you get up close, then you'll start seeing the real details of like the Baroque Rococo influences of floral flourishes, essentially. So, yeah, that's how I would design this differently if I had more time. But since I, again, like I said, I was pressed for time, I just wanted to just give a quick impression of Baroque flourishes. So I'm just going to throw something in there real quick, and that's essentially what ended up happening. But yeah, if I had more time, I would definitely, definitely refine this some more because there's just so much more that I could add to it. You know, the building in the background, for example, like uh, I could probably skip a whole lot on detailing that one. Uh, the trees, I might do a photo texture on the trees. I will definitely do a photo texture on the ground if I go back over this and I will definitely work some more on the foreground character because I feel like the foreground character provides a narrative to the piece. Even though this illustration that I'm working on really is more focused on an architectural uh, piece in front of us, I, I added that girl because of the narrative aspect of it, you know? I mean, you look at the photo and you kind of sit there and wonder, what's the girl all about? You know, like, why is she a mainstay in the image? And even though I have no story in my head for why she is there, 
I put her in there because I know that will elicit a narrative response to the viewers. Because I'm sure you're sitting there wondering like what she's all about. And the reason why I know that you're wondering that is because I'm wondering that too, you know. I put her in there not because I have a story for her, but I put her in there because I know that she will make a story for the painting, you know. So yeah, um, in a way I guess I could come up with a contest of my own. Come up with a story for the girl, you know. But yeah, if I was to develop this piece some more, I will definitely develop that foreground character because I know that she provides a narrative focal point to the image. Even though this narrative isn't very clear. And uh, now you see me work on the flourishes within the clock. Again, I'm not too happy with those details. That I will definitely edit. Um, the clock hands though I think I did a, a, a nice job on that one so I might keep it as is and just add details to it and then here I am working on that Japanese design again which is just so hard for me to work on uh, in such a small amount of time I, I really wish I had more time to just explore this architecture because this is a very interesting architecture in all honesty I, this would be fun to model too to to create to fully detail on blender i think this monument would be really fun to work on but for now it looks really cool as is as a painting so yeah Right now, you see me not do a whole lot. Um, well, actually, now I'm moving and doing something. But not too long ago, you just saw me pause. Like, uh, nothing was going on in the scene. Um, when I get to that point, that means I'm really <laughs> mentally exhausted. <laughs> when I sit there and stare at a piece for, you know, a few minutes, a minute or two or three... That means I'm getting to the mental exhaustion point. That's the point where I'm like, wow, I've been looking at this image for too long. And see, there I am again. You know, where I do frequent pauses like that. Once I start doing frequent pauses like that and constantly looking out. Um, and that's the part where I'm exhausted. And, and I'm trying to troubleshoot the image. But then I can't really think very effectively, you know. So, yeah. I think at this point I'm like at the four hour mark and yeah speed painting this was was exhausting um but yeah I wanted to mention that because that happens you know typically when when I get to this stage what I typically do is I stop working in a piece and would I would work on something else you know there's a reason why when I draw or paint I typically work on one hour increments typically so for an hour I'll work on one piece and then for an hour I'll work on another piece the only time I ever do anything differently is when I do speed paint because typically I could speed paint for two three hours without you know getting exhausted and most of my speed paints um, are right around that mark around the three hour mark but once I start hitting the four hour mark that's like exhaustion part for me you know I really have to push myself to just finish Whatever it is that I needed to finish. And this is true too for the longer illustrations. Because you know the longer illustrations. Um, especially like the last 5 to 7 hours of a long illustration. I get to that stage too where I'm like mentally exhausted looking at image. But I just push myself to just finish it. So yeah on, on some moments you know the last 3 hours of a long illustration. Are like some of the hardest parts for me because... I'm just exhausted, but you know, I just push myself to just finish the piece. Right now, you see me do color adjustments um, to accentuate the contrast. And I'm not too happy with the colors with the yellow. I, I feel like it's too yellow, so I'm like trying to knock it down, but everything I do just wasn't working out very well, so I decided to just keep some of the yellow as is so yeah but 
but yeah this piece is almost done i'm just putting in some finishing touches to it uh putting in some color dodge checking my values seeing if everything reads correctly and from afar it looks it reads very well which i like because a lot of my environments doesn't read very well and it's viewed from afar i guess too much information is what ends up happening
So as you can see, like the past few minutes, all I've been doing again is just the detailing part. And I've pretty much mentioned what it is involved with the detailing, which is defining your edges, delineating your edges, uh, adding highlights and accentuating the shadows. Uh, it's pretty much just what I do. And if more details added, then, you know, I would do a quick sketch of some sort and then kind of add more to it. Kind of like a, the way I did it with the roof. But yeah, this piece is very much close to being finished, close to being done. Uh, the last edit that I pretty much did was just, I added uh, atmospheric perspective. Um, when I was talking to a bunch of SketchZone.net members, um, Sticky and Myriad was talking about uh, atmospheric perspective and so I added that in with the building you know kind of faded it into the background and yeah that's pretty much just about the last edit that I pretty much made and everything else I pretty much just kept as is so yeah this piece is done thank you guys for watching it with me and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my explanations make sense to you guys. Uh, I will be seeing you guys in the next episode. Good night.